after. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank everybody go to Romans. <laughs> Stationary, no, no, off of me. I'm going to swear. Let's go to uh, Romans 5. So that just as sin has reigned in death, so grace. An unearned and undeserved favor might reign also through righteousness, right standing with God, with issues in eternal life, through, in eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, Lord. You know, you can walk away from God, but He never leaves you. Come on. He gave His Son one time, and I know a lot of people have a bunch of different views on that, and that's okay to have different views on that, on on eternal salvation. That's okay. And you know, and being one, and being God touching you, and that's it. That's all. I personally believe when God lays His hand on you, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's it. He it's gave His Son one time and one time only. It's done. It's done. And then we can go. We can walk away from Him if we want to. Yes, we can. That's true. He gives us a choice. Is it heaven or hell? All I know is, man, is I get blessed when I'm walking with Him. Right. He does something for. He does something for my heart. He does something for my wife's heart when, when. Come on in. When she serves him, when we love on people, that's serving God. When we help people, that's that's serving God. Something happens. But when that sacrificial altar, we're talking about. See, we 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 covered last week a little bit of message. Not there's a bunch of new faces. I like why I like this place because it rotates a lot, it changes a lot. You know what I mean? But um, we covered we covered last week about how. The, the 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 gospel, how Jesus Christ and the message of salvation and the message of repentance. I mean, dude, it's there, it's all over the place. I mean, praise God for salvation, man. That God, that Jesus Christ comes in and, and you're saved and you're touched, and man, He's gonna begin to clean your life up and you're going to heaven and woo, I'm in there, right and all that stuff. But but then what? After that, Come on, after now. you repent, man, and how many times do you gotta repent for the same thing? Hello. Over and over and over and over again. If you keep on having me repent for the same thing, guess what happens, man? The Holy Ghost that's that's in you anyhow, once you accepted Jesus, I mean if that holy that Holy Spirit touched you, that's what called him to you in the first place was that measure of faith. That's right. Okay? And so and so every time that you got to repent for doing the same thing over and over and over again. I mean I got I got my ways of thinking about that. I'm thinking if you gotta repent for the same thing over and over again, really the honestly the truth being as far as I'm seeing is that you really didn't repent in the first place. <laughs> you didn't really repent in the first place. Come on. You know what I mean? Who didn't repent in the first place? Me? I do the same thing sometimes over and over again, man. I ask God forgive me, Lord. Please. <laughs> and I hear myself going, you don't mean that. I don't hear the devil telling me that. Come on. That's right. Can I tell the truth in here? Please. Can I tell the truth? That's right. I hear me. I go, man, I know that I'm supposed to be getting on my knees and praying and because I thought this wrong thing or I did this wrong thing. And so I'm just going to go ahead and go through the monotonous drone, go through the motions and get on my knees and, you know, and, well, God forgive me, Lord, of my sins, you know, and, you know, four hail marriage, five heart falls, all that stuff and everything. And, oh, and I'm going to church and I'm warm and fuzzy till next Sunday or next Saturday. Come on, when I got to repent for the same thing again and you Come wonder why God isn't working in your life. Hello, somebody. Come on. Now. Man, where's God? Man, I'm going to church and I'm going to church and you know, I mean, I'm feeding the homeless over here, man, and you know what I mean, and I'm helping people out and stuff, and you know, I mean, I see God working in all these other people's lives, man, and but I'm right there too, and my hands are in it. But man, when do I get to get some of that? Come on, come on. As soon as you receive the word, Say man. It. You ain't got to receive it from me. Come on, receive it from Him. Right. Yeah. He's your pastor. Hello. You know what I'm saying? Hello. You know, I mean, churches, the word said, do not forsake the gathering amongst yourselves. And it's good that we can get to come to church and hang out because, you know, that serves an earthly, an earthly purpose. It networks us yes. for good times and bad. Yep. You know? It networks us. We need each other. I mean, physically need each other to survive sometimes. I mean, many, many since our church, we've been, how long have we been here? What, eight months now? Man, that's good. Our pastor, our pastor's like, what, a year? 
nine months now. We're giving birth. Look, we're having a building next door. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. What? Come on now. Come on. But look, I mean, we just like, we let that, we, we, we still, we hold on to that stuff. You know, and so when we hold on to it, the Holy Spirit that's just like inside of you is trying to guide you to, to do this, to lead you to the thing that God has already ordained for you to do. Can't see where to go because you don't let go of the stuff that you that you said that you let go of. Come on. You 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 shed, you get rid of the animal. That's what that that's the symbolic sacrificial altar in the beginning in in the in the place of worship. That's what that's for. That's 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 I'm gonna say I'm not saying that the Bible Bible is allegorical. Does anybody know what that means? Yeah. No. It kind of like it refers to something. It's like it's like the the one station in front of the temple where the sacrificing of the animals took place. Actually, in depth, what this is what allegorical means, and this is how I'm seeing it for me. And because God put me here, I get to tell you this. <laughs> I, I'm seeing it that not it's, it's just not of the bloodletting and the sacrificing of the different kinds of, of animals to, for the atonement of sins, but I'm looking at it as us, as individuals, as a, as the beast, as a human being having a sinful nature, man, sacrificing my nature of my animalistic nature, my behavior, of some of my always and my, my cussing and hating and lying and stealing and cheating and shooting dope and robbing and, and all that stuff, man, and throwing that in the, on the altar and burning it and getting giving it away. And giving it to God so that I can walk through the divine womb, man, the door, so I can come in here and I can praise and worship in whole, man, and I can get some of the word and it can go in me and I can receive and grow and change. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? 